There's one thing I fear with people that follow all these different videos online, especially value team and being one of them, is to think it is so easy to become an entrepreneur. I don't want to mislead you for you to think this is easy. The game of entrepreneurship is very, very hard. This is why only a few choose to become entrepreneurs and the majority are wanting to stay on the sidelines playing it safe. Just keep that part in mind. So a lot of people that want to wear these, I'm an entrepreneur shit, I'm going to go out there and be an entrepreneur, you got to know one thing here. And that is if you don't handle pressure, you're going to end up on this side very quickly. This is why there's a few on this side. It's because they learn how to handle pressure. This is not just in the game of business. Look in the game of baseball, sports. I remember one time many, many years ago, I used to go to Dodger games. I was 13, 14 years old, and I went to a game against Houston Astros. Back in the days, the squad was Jeff Bagwell, Craig Biggio, Ken Caminiti, Kevin Bass, and I liked the Houston Astros team at that time. And one of my favorite plays was Ken Caminiti. And I will never forget, as a kid, Ken Caminiti was a left-handed third baseman. He had, I think, 41 home runs one season. Just a beautiful swing he had. I go afterwards, and I'm with Kevin Bass. I'm talking to Kevin Bass. Ken Caminiti is to my left. He starts crying and hugging this lady. 15 minutes he's crying while he's hugging this lady. And I watch her saying, oh my gosh, what is going on here? And all she was saying is begging him to stop drinking or whatever it was. Fast forward a few years later, you know what happens to Ken Caminiti? He ends up dying. This story, I have personal friends that this happens. I just had one that happened to two, three weeks ago. Same exact scenario I'm telling you here. Because why? Because of this subject of pressure. So Hollywood happens all the time. Business happens all the time. Sports, it happens all the time. This happens all the time. So I want to put a formula behind it where you're going to be able to say, okay, cool. I kind of know how to handle pressure. And I, that still doesn't guarantee you're going to make it in business. I just want to kind of give you an idea of what could possibly take place with you. So the types of pressure you're going to face in business. Let's go through a few of them. One of them is fast success, fast money. I got a Snapchat earlier today from a kid, 21-year-old kid. This is what the Snap says. Pat, I'm 21 years old. I just made $1 million this year. I am so afraid. What should I do? He's never made that kind of money. His parents have never made that kind of money. And let alone making it that fast at 21 years old. That is pressure. Some people say, I'd love to have that kind of a pressure. It's still pressure. Personal life issues, pressure. You're having a relationship that doesn't work out. How do you bring it in business and you're still trying to close a deal? But you got a relationship issue. Wife, dad, mommy, husband, you know, kids, all this other stuff. Getting sued. It's going to happen in business. Uh, losing talent to another company. It's going to happen in business. You know, uh, uh, a, a big order canceled. Somebody ordered with you $100,000. You're excited, you're about to get the order, boom, they cancel it with you, you don't know what to do. You sold the house, you sold an insurance policy, you got a, a social media contract with a client and they cancel it. You don't handle handle that, that's pressure. Media bashing you negatively, pressure. New competitor, new threat taking over your position. Security breach, somebody comes in into your system and finds all these social securities, all this, it's happened a lot recently. Ideas stolen, backstabbing, deadlines. Deadlines brings a lot of pressure to people. I had somebody just yesterday told me this in an email. This person said to me in an email saying, I can't necessarily promise you what I'm going to get done by the end of this month, but I'm going to do my best because there's way too many variables. I said, you can say that if you're doing me a favor, but you can't say that if I'm paying you for it. If I'm paying you for it, there is a deadline. You got to get it done, but some people can't handle that pressure. That's the world of business. The world of business isn't this rah-rah exciting, let me go be a millionaire and drive nice cars and impress people and girls want to flirt with me. That's not the world of business, just so you understand this. There's a real legitimate part of business that you need to have to handle this. So that means a lot of friction, crisis. Sometimes you feel like it's the end of the world and you start asking these strange questions. Can I do this? Right? You hit this wall. Boom! You're by yourself. Can I do this? Do I make the right, did I make the right decision by taking money out of my 401k starting a business? Some people do that. Did I make the right decision of even getting into this industry? Did I make the right decision quitting my job? What if I fail? What will people think of me? And last but not least, where is the smallest hole in the wall? Hole doesn't have a W. Where's the smallest hole in the wall for me to hide in? How can I get away from everybody and hide in it? I don't want anybody to see me. I want to be alone. Don't call me. Don't talk to me. Leave me alone. This sucks. Why? Boom. Pressure. Dwight Gooden. Pressure. Robert Downey Jr. Pressure. Fast success, but he recovered. LeBron James, pressure for the first many years, can't win, he won. Kobe Bryant, pressure after Colorado, he recovered. 
Uh, Daryl Strawberry, Pressure. You got, uh, what's the other guy's name? Dustin Diamond, I think, from back in the days from uh, Screech, right? Pressure. This is all different types of pressure that you're going to be getting. All of it. So what do you do? So now the question, okay, Pat, how do I handle this pressure? I just signed an agreement with a big publishing company, and they want me to write a book on how to process issues, because I've said this for now two, three years on video, but I've been saying this for a long time. If you work with me directly, the number one skill set anybody can learn in their lifetime is to learn how to process issues. You learn how to process issues, you're going straight to the top if you're not afraid of working hard and knowing clearly what you want. So I'm writing a book on exactly how to process issues, and I'm getting detailed to the steps where you can actually quantify it, sit down and say, this is exactly how I'm going to do this, and I'm giving you a ton, ton of content in this book. Won't be coming out for 18 months, so I'm not selling you any books today. I'm just telling you I'm working on that right now. What's the process? Step number one, first question you got to ask yourself is what's the worst case scenario? What's the worst thing that could happen, right? So sometimes my friends are afraid of getting married, and I ask them, what's the worst case scenario? What is the worst case scenario in this situation here? The guy's gonna leave you? Yes, can you handle that? Uh, what's the, can you handle that? I don't know if I can handle that. Whether you know you're not prepared to lead. What's the worst case scenario? Could you lose that customer? Yes, can you handle that? I think I can handle it, it's gonna suck, but I can, okay, then great. What's the worst case? So always go to the worst case. Worst case, marriage doesn't work out. Worst case, I file bankruptcy. Worst case, always go to worst case. And if you go to worst case, you can accept worst case, then come back. If you've already accepted this, very rarely is this going to happen. You can handle all the other things that's going to come up to you, right? Step number two is control. And when I say control, it's very simple. What can you control with this issue and pressure you're facing? What can you not control? Make a list of things you cannot control. I don't even want to spend a, think, a second thinking about it. What do you control? Spend time uh, looking at this here. Once you make a list of things that you can control on the problems that you're facing, next is qualifying it. What is qualifying? Okay, I got seven things that I can control. What's the most important? This is important, that is important, this is important. The other four, they're really issues, but they're not really that issues. I take top three, then I finalize it and bring it down to one, the top issue prioritizing the cause of the number one issue, then I ask what is causing this? And I ask so many why, why, why did this happen? Why did that happen? What causes, why, why, why? Until I go to the deepest why, then you solve the deepest why. Once you solve the deepest why, da, 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 then it comes over here and the pressure you say, this is what I'm facing, it is what it is, we'll overcome it and we'll move on. And then you move on. And by the way, just so you know, your income level, the people that make more money, they make more money because they can handle more pressure. That's why they make more money. In sports, the guy that, that can take the last shot, bottom of the ninth, he can handle it. Pressure. In business, boardroom, quarterly calls, investors, pressure. In, in the arena of politics or the arena of military, pressure. Whoever can handle pressure the best, the most, ends up winning. And this is why I tell you when I said, I don't want to mislead you. The world of business is very ugly. The world of business is going to have a lot of people out there that are going to come after you. But if you create a system and figure out a way to handle pressure and you put your work ethic where you're going out and constantly trying to figure out ways to improve and you put in a work ethic there and it's important to you, you will eventually possibly have a shot at doing this. And the reason why I talk about this, because if you don't know handle pressure, this is what typically leads to vice. Now, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about vice, but I'm talking about drugs, alcohol, ecstasy, Xanax, pain, you know, Vicodin, pot, cocaine, you know, gambling, secret gambling habits. This leads to all of that stuff because there's an escape from the actual pressure that people want to handle. So to them, this is an escape. This is an escape. This is an escape. You know, going out there and gambling is an escape from what the actual reality is. You create this, you don't handle this, you won't have to have a vice because your vice is trying to play this game of business, seeing if you can handle it or not. So again, going back to it, watch this video again, figure out one of the issues you're facing right now that's putting a lot of pressure in your life, use this questionnaire, solve it, and see what your deepest why is, and then based on that, start working on fixing the deepest why. So with that being said, if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, comment on the bottom, and if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, click on the subscribe button here. And if you're not part of the notification squad, click on the notification squad to be one of the first to get this video 
every time it comes out. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.